Hey guys, it's Chad, and this is devlog number three for Spookville Cabin Escape. This devlog is going to be a little bit different. I actually had a phone call with one of my buddies who's not in game development, but is in the IT industry, and he wanted to see how a game is made. So I start from the very basics. I explain what Unity is, what a terrain is, how 3D models are put together, and then eventually into what we're both familiar with, how to code the behaviors of the objects in the game, whether that be artificial intelligence, combat systems, etc. So stay tuned, it's an interesting video, and I hope you enjoy it. And I also wanted to mention, I do have a Discord now, the link is in the description. I'd love it for you to join in, participate in some chats, leave some feedback and suggestions and ideas. Link to the Discord in the chat. Let me give you a, a quick overview. The tool I use is Unity, and that's this whole like editor here, and inside of Unity is a bunch of different tools and stuff. So if I just click the ground, you can kind of see an orange outline. And that is called the terrain. And the terrain has several tools in it. Um, some of which, if I click here, are I can paint textures, so the colors. I can sculpt the terrain. Um, and that's kind of like uh, raise and lower. I can set heights, smooth the heights. Right here, uh, I can, I'm modifying the brush. But if I just click, it'll deform the train real time based on this, the brush I have selected. So if I wanted a little rock area, I can click it real quick. You can see it real time. <laughs> the, the trees and stuff were actually painted with a similar style tool. I, I can select a brush size. Right, like kind of like any paint program, and then I can choose a paint density based on the slider. So if I only wanted to paint like one tree at a time, I could just shrink it as small as I want. Um, and same with like bushes and stuff, and I can add as many as I want. I've, I've just got two variations that are um, random in both the height, the width, and the color variation, the paint texture. So I've got like grass layer, dirt, roots, forest, gravel, and layered rock. So that's how I kind of created the, the world. The cabin and the boy and the mom character, basically every 3D shape you see in the, in the actual game are 3D objects, 3D models. And these models are actually just polygons or uh, triangles that make up the shape. If I look at the boy character, and it kind of looks like a mess, but you can see each triangle, right, in the shape. And, and these vertices are where the, the points meet. If we just slightly modify the position of those vertices and stretch those faces out in such a way, it will actually create the 3D shape. And so if I come in here, and this is the tool that I use in here, the, the art for the game was largely outsourced or purchased. But if I was to want to create something new, uh, like a wagon, in the 3D view, I can uh, specify the height and width of these objects, like that, and then uh, I can, but you can kind of see how I just start like it with a cube, and then actually what I want to do is get it into that wireframe mode. And you can't see the polygons here, you can see the faces, so like if I, was to, there we go, that's why I went in. You can see the vertices in each corner of where they come together. And when I export it, it's actually going to triangulate each of these faces into a polygon. So let me just do this real quick. So for like the boy character, was that? Did that yourself, right? No, 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 no. I, I outsourced that. Oh. Um. <laughs> well, with with a, a basic shape, honestly. So like. So yeah, you got the cube right here. You could essentially start with something like this, and then. Mhm. Mm yep. Exactly.
Okay. So that's that's pretty primitive, right? It's a empty box or whatnot, and I can uh, go back and quickly select like the vertices and draw a face, and then that should fill it back in. And then same on this side. So see what it, it was just a copy paste error, but there you go. So now now it's full, and I can even select. Uh, like the, mm -hmm. So I just select the vertices, go back to solid, and fill it in. So and even like this, even like this box right here, it still has those like those triangles. We just can't see it. Right. Like the screen, like with the screen here. Yep. Let me uh, see if I can do that real quick. So if I go to faces, there you go. So what it's done now is triangulated each of the vertices into two different faces. You see how that's two different triangles? Yeah. And there too. So I don't, you gotta be mindful of how many polygons are what these triangles are called. How many are actually being displayed on the screen at once. So uh, there's a tool called like merge faces. Um, Well, anyways, it doesn't matter. But that, that's a quick way to reduce the number of, of polygons you have on your screen. Because when every polygon counts, this is kind of what it ends up looking like. You know, like... Um, shaded... Shaded... Like the grass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is the one I wanted. So you looking at the boy, you can kind of see all the different polygons so, that just make up his face. Um, same with like the Nerf gun. And so like in the handle, you can you can slightly see how many polygon make up this piece. And so yeah, I mean the more polygons you add, the more detail you've got. So like the cylinder piece in the stock was actually um, extrapolated in such a way that it's uh, a cylinder and. Um, I am going to try to, and it may not work, but I do have sound, and so, okay, so I'm actually in the game now, and it might be looking a little, a little choppy, but what I'm actually working on today is actually that mini-map here on the top right-hand corner. So you can kind of see the, the wind is blowing the, the grass in such a way, and so it, it's pretty detailed, and I'm actually going to reduce the the amount of detail that's on the mini map to more just a uh, heads up display and stuff. But now that uh, the boy's got the weapon, you know, I can aim down the sides and fire off darts. <laughs> if you can see him flying through the air. But, um. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it's all good. But yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stand real close. There's a couple oh, okay. on there. Right there. <laughs> so no big deal, no big deal. But uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, if I look at the character, like you know, like okay, well the graphics are kind of making sense now too. But what you know, what's it all about? What's it all about? So if I look at the character. I can see it's got a couple classes, just just basic C sharp classes assigned to it. I've got the uh, character controller, uh, third person controller, ridge body push, starter asset inputs. So like um, one that I wrote is the shooter controller. So if I open that up, that's just Visual Studio, and it should look very similar. It's uh, one on the left so I have just you know primitive types just a uh, public int starter weapon index equipable weapons uh, bullet types maximum number of weapons and so I've got them hard-coded here or initialized with a, a default value but when I actually come back to the editor I can see those same properties um, in the editor and I can change it real time like I can change 
the uh, current weapon class that you start with. I always start with hands and force the player to go pick up stuff, but it's just one example. Okay, so if it's a, yeah, if it, you, it's just a, a data annotation that goes above the property. For example, like this header is just the bolded section. So like I've got start weapon, start weapon, and then the property name is start weapon index, start weapon index, and the editor will automatically add the spaces and, and beautify the, the property name for you. If I like expand this, like equipable weapons, the, the plural weapons tells me it's probably an array or a list. And right now it's empty. But if I play this real time and I'm watching this equipable weapons list, as soon as I pick it up, he'll automatically equip it and he'll be added to uh, the array. So I can see that the dart rifle with 12 bullets was loaded in at index one. And that's what it's got. So if I if I stick in, and I can I can edit the scene real time too while it's running. Um, it won't save my changes while I'm I'm doing that. But uh, let me see if I go into prefabs, oops, weapons, and I will add the sword in right there. Go back to the game mode. Turn the play around. There's the sword. So when I pick it up. What happens is it adds it to the, the back of the character. So it shows that, you know, oh, you picked it up, it's just not equipped. So if you're like in a, a gunfight, um, you know, it's not going to automatically switch on you if you don't want to. But if I press the button to switch weapons, it not only adjusts his posture and equips the weapon that's been assigned to him, but it also changes like the animation state um, for the character. So now he's playing sword attack animations instead of uh, the rifle. And vice versa, if I switch it back, you can see that the sword goes behind his back, and now he's back to playing the uh, the gun shooting animations. So one of the things, too, that I implemented um, over the weekend was the interaction for... Um, questing or missions, objectives to progress the storyline. So when I get within range of like this mom character, which is actually, if I come up to her and I look at it in the scene view, the mom character has a dialogue manager script attached to it that has a few properties assigned to it and an audio source. But you'll see here it's got a box collider and that box collider says, okay, you can't can't walk through them, you can't, you know, if, if I was to shoot at it, it, it would stop any, uh, you know, projectiles or whatever. But to see what that actually looks like, I click that, and I can see that it's just a giant box, but you, I'm inside of the box. And that is because instead of it actually triggering the physics to stop you from moving through it, I've got it set to is trigger. The is trigger says, um, okay, something has entered inside of this uh, collider, what do you want me to do with it? And so if I come back in here and I open up the dialogue trigger, or sorry, not, it's probably dialogue manager looking at that. I'm going to look for the on trigger enter and I'm actually not using the uh, the trigger state for collision. I'm actually saying uh, use the trigger state for staying. So that is if I enter and I, I'm still within the box and then I press the use key or the interact key right here, which is defined up here, then I should start the conversation. So I'm halfway through the, the conditional. I am in the box to collide. Then I'll hit the interact button and now I've got a dialogue. And, hey bud, it's going to get cold out tonight. I want to start a fire to warm up. Could you find and bring back several pieces of firewood? Three pieces should do the trick. 
that should accept the quest and now I can see a prompt over there and this is why yeah, I, yeah, the heart, it, it's hard coded down here. But what I'm going to do is, now that the quest has been accepted, and I go and pick up like the first piece, see it's the same thing, I've got a box collider with a trigger attached to it. I interact with it, plays a sound effect, and the wood disappears. So, once I pick up three boxes and I come back to her, I should be able to progress the story along. Uh, it's not working quite yet, but um, it just repeats, but you know, baby steps. Is this a cave? I hate spiders. The only good spider is a dead spider. Are there? 